Hello, this is Dr. Garrett Castleberry, Associate Professor and Program Director of Communication, Media, and Ethics at Mid-America Christian University. This video is for our COM4103 class, Special Topics in Media Studies. Our emphasis in this Special Topics course is an introduction to film. It's a film survey course where we have broken the class into units, with each unit emphasizing a distinct film genre. Or is it distinct? That's part of the game. That's what we're having fun exploring. And one of the ways we can explore these texts, of course, in addition to screening them, which we do uh, each time we gather, uh, but also we can do that by researching, writing about these, uh, these genre texts, these films, as you all are doing in your genre journals. Uh, but we can also do it through uh, the process of research and finding out what others have had to say about these films. And each week I try to spotlight a couple of readings for you all just to demonstrate uh, the dexterity of these texts, the popularity that they have. And you could go on IMDb, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, all of these aggregated websites and find contemporary takes on uh, these mostly classical, but also some contemporary films. However, uh, it takes a little bit of extra digging to locate those those reviews, those write-ups, those essays um, that really try to go beneath the surface and, and dig out some additional um, thematic content for us. And so I have a simple trio, a trilogy, if you will, of essays um, that I will briefly explore. The first comes from, and it was actually the fold-out booklet uh, that was included in the Criterion edition of the film, the remastered version of uh, the 1939 classic Stagecoach. Uh, and Criterion, as I as I promoted them in class, and then again uh, on our on our lecture podcast um, for this week's episode. Uh, they do an excellent job uh, accumulating a lot of supplemental materials for uh, for audiences, for consumers, right? For fans of film, but also even scholars of film, all right? And um, uh, by proxy, students are uh, sort of scholars in progress, as we like to say. And, uh, of course, this content, this information, it, it, it can be intended for a broad audience. Anyway, those that are interested and passionate about talking about media, uh, learning about media, including cinema. So, uh, the, this is a printout. I did have that copy. It's a personal copy, uh, uh, from Criterion as well as our library's copy, uh, but <laughs> neither are in my immediate possession in the office. But the, the essay we were looking at is from the inside. It's called Taking the Stage by David Cairns. And it's, it's a great introductory piece uh, that you could easily take in, whether before you screen the film or afterward. And I think it's gonna add some value to your experience and help sell um, that that information, that content. Let me preview uh, the two books that I drew our additional supplemental uh, samples or excerpts from this week. They are bona fide classics in the uh, in the world of Western uh, cinema scholarship. All right, so academic research people. Uh, the first one is Horizons West, directing the Western from John Ford to Clint Eastwood, and this is from Jim Kitsis. And Kitsis is, uh, is no stranger to the Western. He, he is uh, on the pantheon of elite Western scholars in the last uh, 35 years. Uh, so um, this is, uh, the, the unique approach to his book is that each chapter focuses on a different director. What is a director's core strengths or what do they bring to a film artistically what kind of vision do they have uh what what is, how does their personality add to or perhaps complicate uh, the the films the film sets that they're a part of and that's a that's a fantastic um 
a way to think about that collaborative medium that is film and how how uh, while directors sort of steer the ship they're they're the ship captains in many regards uh they can have varying degrees of control and power and authority and what how does that translate to what we see on the screen and whether we like or dislike or value or love uh, a, a given film and so um another area i would point to from that from that chapter and this just helps me locate a little bit quicker i didn't mark the pages page 35 Kitsis is doing a very nice job of noting how Ford uh, adheres to certain types of stock conventions or uh, tropes of the Western. All right, and so this this chapter is doing some good business, helping us understand uh, how Westerns function as as a genre, right? As a film genre. And the second book that I wanted to reference this week, another classic, all right? And so this one's The Western Reader uh, by both Jim Kitsis and Greg Rickman. So they co-edited this, what is essentially an anthology. And oftentimes what you find is readers, uh, books that are called readers. <laughs> for uh, for those of you new in the class, we have a few, a few uh, first semester freshmen. So that's very exciting. But readers tend to... Um, uh, 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 pull together a laundry list of essential reads that have been previously published, maybe in books, maybe in scholarly journals, uh, and they could be newer, they could be older. And one key reason is some of these are really hard to find, and some of these essays are uh, difficult to get to. And so maybe not all not all university libraries or public libraries have access to these journals. And so a reader on any subject, you know, it could be a, a television studies reader, a, a Western reader, uh, it could be a, a microbiology reader, um, but they do a great job of pulling the essentials together to give us a collection of thoughts and ideas on a given subject. So within the Western reader, um, there was, uh, there are many fabulous essays, uh, hundreds of, of pages and chapters, and it breaks it into uh, units, uh, just like we do, but units that focus in different ways. So the chapter, and really it's not even a chapter, but the, the excerpt that I pulled, of course, has to do with uh, a little bit of John Ford's uh, career and inspiration. And uh, that chapter is titled, A Home in the Wilderness, Visual Imagery in John Ford's Westerns, and that's written by Michael Budd. That's a 1976 essay. That's a long time ago. All right, and so um, in uh, Home in the Wilderness, this has a great, this this does an excellent job of, of connecting to a theme that we uh, prefaced and and asked you to look for as we screen Stagecoach, uh, that, that use of visual style, the, the, the contrast between mythic uh, landscapes and how they are shot versus those tight claustrophobic interior sets and what that means what it's communicating about a text and how we can gain a deeper understanding through recognizing those types of patterns uh, so that is that is the other essay a trio of excerpts uh, that potentially could add to our, our conversation, to our, our flavor of, uh, of Western uh, uh, scholarship. And so hope you all are enjoying the process of processing. Okay, a little redundant there, a little double usage, but I hope you are taking in these themes, considering what makes a Western distinct from perhaps our previous unit on the adventure film and we'll continue to diversify every few weeks so hang tight look forward to that and uh we'll see you in class